Hello everybody, we're just trying to fix something <coughs> and actually managed to fix it. So thanks for your patience, <coughs> making sure that I am also recording this this time. So great to be uh, back here at the right time, at the right place uh, with uh, short sleeves after a journey to uh, a few places that were somewhat challenged, or maybe I was challenged, not the places. Uh, like Paris and London and Sofia with uh, coldness. So it's great to be back um, in a mild winter here in Los Angeles. And um, thanks for being patient with me while I was traveling and uh, hopping around. And I wanted to talk about a few things today. Actually, we haven't met for two weeks and quite a lot of things already happened. We'll try to look at some of them, at least the symbolism behind it, because you can get the news elsewhere. Of course, uh, unless you get it in uh, uh, places like Fox News, which is alternative truth or alternative lies, depends where your the border goes. But we'll mention a few um, interesting things that they were obsessed about lately uh, because it does relate to the tree of life in a funny way. It's always funny when people are idiotic, but it's very entertaining sometimes. But uh, next week is very auspicious. Remember I told you that these Sundays tend to fall on very important dates. And next week on February 5, we have a full moon. It's uh, the full moon in Leo. And it happens to be Tu Bishvat, which we'll talk about in a second what it actually means. And because it's actually going to be happening on Sunday, I'll talk about it next week. But I don't want it to be too late for you guys. I got some feedback from people, uh, which I really appreciate, that uh, asked me to always talk about the next Sunday as well. Because I finish usually on Saturday. Because uh, some people get it a little bit later. And, and I totally understand. You know, that's the basis of compassion when you actually travel and not only... Um, uh, have to imagine how people live but then I thought okay I did this class when at 7 p.m. in in Paris at uh, 8 p.m. in Israel 9 p.m. in uh, Istanbul a few times this journey so I've realized that yes the Sundays that we talk here or I talk here at 10 o'clock in the morning it doesn't necessarily mean that it's like that the whole world so we will do that today but we will talk about the idea behind Tu Bishvat, what it actually means and how you can use it practically, especially that it is a astrological based holiday. So that's going to be good for us to work over and look into. But first, as always, let, let's look at see what we have uh, prepared for the next week. So what we have is uh, we start today, January 29. And for those of you who are still to experience the day, uh, we have Venus in Pisces. This is really good news. I think we talked about it last time that Venus is moving into Pisces and we all love Venus and we all love when Venus, the goddess of love, is in love with the right uh, sign, let's say, be bedding her. And in this case, Venus is in Pisces and she's going to be there for three weeks, which is amazing for us because it's going to cover Valentine's Day. And Venus in Pisces is considered to be exalted. And especially she's happy right now because she's going closer and closer. She's heading toward um, an anticipated conjunction that's actually going to happen between February 13 to 15, which I mentioned in the book uh, quite a lot. Uh, the book, this book, yeah. Uh, because it falls, it, it's almost like it's Venus and Neptune's conjunction is fla flanking or hugging Valentine's Day. So we're going to have it from the 13th to the 15th. I know it's not this week. It's going to be in two weeks, but it's a great time to prepare for it because when Venus is conjunct with her higher octave, uh, which is Neptune, we're connecting worldly love. You can call it uh, the love between people, the love to people, to objects, the love to even pets, the love to hobbies, the love to art with Neptune, which is divine love, the connection to uh, your higher self, the love that maybe your archangel or your guardian angel has with you or your spirit guide. So that is very rare and it's very auspicious for us because since 2012, once a year, we have this conjunction 
conjunction, but it's not going to last forever when Neptune is going to move, and very soon it's going to move into Aries in a year and a half or so. We're not going to have it uh, for 165 years. So if you're planning to fall in love with um, somebody, something, some idea, some concept, some artistic expression, because it's basically love or art conjuncting with Neptune, which is mysticism. And remember John, jo uh, Joseph Campbell, the great mythologist, how he talked about uh, modern shamans being basically the artists. So the art is ruled by Venus. Shamanism, you can say, is ruled by Neptune, and they're conjuncting this Valentine's. So right on the 14th, Right at the Day of Love, celebrated around the world, we are going to have that Venus exalted in Pisces, touching Neptune in Pisces, and she's also going to be conjunct Vesta, the goddess of the hearth, in Pisces. So all of that Piscean energy is going to really be good for us. So if you're planning, again, to fall in love, that's going to be a great time. You want to propose, mm, that's going to be a great time. Do you want to do something that has to do with um, Feng Shui, reorganizing your home in a more mystical, spiritual way? That's going to be a great time. And by the way, on the 13th of uh, fe um, February at, I think, 7 o'clock in LA time, but it's going to be also available over Zoom and you're going to have a recording. We're going to have the class about soulmates and um, twin flames astrological compatibility uh, here in LA but again it's going to be over Zoom so you can go to uh, the chat there is the link there or you can go to my website or if you're looking at it in Instagram you can go to my um, bio link you'll see that under appearances or under workshops you'll find that as the first workshop so Venus on top of Neptune right at the 13th 14th 15th of um, February prepare for it it's a great treat so we're going to have that Two weekends from now, leading up to Monday, Tuesday, and then we're going to have next weekend uh, the full moon when the moon is in Leo. Moon in Leo means the moon of love. So again, we're going to have kind of like a long week of Valentine's from February 5th all the way up until February 15th. Remember those dates. We don't have any retrogrades, as you can see in the chart. No R's, except uh, Minerva is retrograde, but that's totally fine. It's an asteroid, but no planets that are retrograde, no eclipses around the corner, so a great time. And yes, in March, we're going to have some upheaval. We'll talk about it, not connected to retrograde, even worse, but we'll talk about it later on. The idea is that now we actually have Venus in Pisces blessing this week and blessing next week, especially for creativity, for creation, for money, for healing relationship, partnerships. <coughs> All of these, go these goals are there within reach. And even today on, uh, a, what are we, January 29th, we have the moon exalted in Taurus. So we have Venus exalted in Pisces, moon exalted in uh, a Taurus. That's great exaltations of very feminine, strong, positive energies. So that's moving forward and it's going to be really, really good for us. So that's going to be like that for the next um, a day, two days, because the moon is going to stay in Taurus today and tomorrow. Uh, there is also interesting thing happening January 30th. If you're located in America, n South, North, especially Mexico, Central America, and North America, especially in the uh, West, the Southwest, you will actually be able to see the moon uh, occulting or eclipsing Mars. That's kind of rare, and um, that's going to happen j uh, January 30th. I mean, the moon and Mars are going to conjunct in uh, Gemini. Or, or you know what? Let's move tomorrow. Tomorrow is that day when it's happening. As you can see here in the chart, the moon, Gemini, uh, Mars, Gemini, they're going to conjunct. And the moon is going to be actually blocking Mars a little bit. I, that means that uh, our emotions and our actions are coming together. But our emotion can block our actions. So you just have to be a little bit careful not to be over emotional, especially when the moon is in Gemini. That's going to be starting tomorrow. We're going to have a lot of these um, manic depressive situations, a lot of ups and downs. But if you look at the chart, what you can see is a beautiful flow of trine. Trine basically means a 120 degrees blessed aspect between the sun and the moon. 
usually talks about emotional satisfaction. It's the anti uh, I can get no satisfaction uh, aspect. It kind of uh, happens every once in a while that it negates that idea that you cannot get satisfaction. Well, tomorrow you should get some element of satisfaction. First of all, Neptune is sitting on top of Vesta. Really good energy, a really good day for yoga, for uh, going back to traditional forms of mysticism, especially in relation to movement. So if you ever wanted to uh, maybe you know, go to a Sufi class, uh, uh, if you wanted to go to a yoga class, a dance class, anything to do with movement, tomorrow is great, or any form of um, mysticism that is traditional or something you've done in the past. For you, it's your tradition. That would be great uh, to do tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Neptune conjuncting uh, the Ves Vesta is very rare, so that's a really good thing. And Venus being, again, exalted in Pisces for us, the only thing is that Venus and the Moon are having a little bit of an argument, so it's going to be a little bit, um, uh, maybe it manifests as some arguments between mothers and daughters or women bosses and their women employees uh, because there is that Moon, Venus, or your family is not really happy with your partner or some family member is having an issue with your partnership or with the way you make money. Maybe there's some of that energy. Also, Venus and Mars are in some kind of a square it's an argument they have every once in a while. Uh, it's going to get worse and worse, actually. So it's kind of interesting that even though Venus is um, going to be blessed by Neptune, but that's going to happen later on, so that's fine. It's not going to spoil the party for the 13th and 14th and 15th of um, February. But before that, there might be some elements of arguments or difficulties. Again, because Venus is now in Pisces, Mars is in Gemini, and as you know, there are mutable signs that are uh, squaring. So um, it's a it's a fine it's a kind of a fine line between in relationship being objective and knowing that what you're saying is objectively true to subjectivity meaning well you have to step in your partner's uh, uh, shoes and get into what they're going through which might be completely not reasonable or not uh, logical what they're saying but that's how they feel so it's going to be very much like feelings versus logic or ve versus reason uh, that's going to be a little bit uh, tainting the next few days. But uh, we have that definitely square between Venus and the Moon, Venus and Mars tomorrow, and it's going to linger on for uh, a few more days, maybe until Thursday. But the fact that the Sun and the Moon are sending beautiful energy tomorrow, so even though I know most of us don't like Friday Monday, there is actually not a bad day tomorrow to start the week, the working week. So that's also supported by the fact that um, uh, Venus and the South Node and Venus and the North Node are sending beautiful energy to each other. And those energies are going to get better and better and better. So not only we have Venus in Pisces exalted, but we also have Venus coming closer and closer to a sextile to Uranus uh, and to the North Node, which are very close to each other. Remember, uh, they've been conjunct last year, but they're still very, very close, only six degrees apart. So that's going to be also really helping us, especially in connection to meeting people that are significant in, in your work life, in your business life. So again, Monday, Tuesday, we have the Moon in Gemini, very good for communication, marketing, sales, networking, putting things together. All these energies are going to be even stronger. If we look at January 31st, uh, that is uh, what? Tuesday. The Moon is definitely on top of Mars. There could be an instinct or a tendency to shoot first and then ask questions, and that's never good. So just to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more aware. Uh, as you um, can see from the chart, Mars and the Sun, Mars and the Moon, Moon and uh, the Sun are sending pretty powerful energy to each other. That's why if you look at the chart uh, over Zoom, you can see the Sun and Moon. Here it is. You see this very strong braided white, uh, sorry, braided blue line. All these lines of blue talks about 120 degrees, the sacred mountain, great energy, lack, positivity, growth, expansion. That's between the sun and Mars. It's a day of action. So Tuesday, ruled by Mars, full of action, making things happen, doing things, pushing forward. All that energy is really, really powerful and really positive. This, again, uh, is really good for us. He talks about Monday and Tuesday's day where you can actually achieve things. And Venus is also starting to send a beautiful trine to Minerva. And Minerva is doing the same to the South Node and the North Node. So we have a lot of messages coming from the Goddess of Wisdom. 
uh, especially it can come through family members so pay attention to what mother figures or family members are suggesting or telling you and also uh, look deep into uh, wisdom that can come from emotions so the more you can again speak with I feel the better it will be for us but the conjunct the trine between the Sun and Mars Sun and the moon is also very strong it's like we said Tuesday if we look at Wednesday uh, Venus and Mars are getting closer and closer to having their square so the squares are going to be very strong this weekend uh, again it seems to be uh, difficulties in some relationship or between partners partners again in work partners in life to pay a little bit attention to contracts because of that and also especially on Wednesday to be a little bit more mindful of any kind of uh, deception illusions not the best time to sign anything new again just because Venus and Mars are sending a square uh, that's never a uh, good news and also because we have this uh, Mars and uh, sorry Neptune and Moon sex a uh, Neptune and moon square so it's not again the best energy Neptune whenever he's squaring can bring up addictions none uh, anything to do with dependency codependency deception disillusionment and when you talk about the moon which is emotional and especially when Neptune being in Pisces moon in, Vi in Gemini again there is some clash you'll see around you between uh, emotions and um, intellect between passion and reason between EQ and IQ and it's not that they're not strong both of them can be strong but you have to be aware that sometimes you need to be emotional uh, in certain situation and logical in other situation and not to mix it so much and don't forget we are under the influence of Aquarius this whole month obviously we are now in the land of Aquarius and the dark side of Aquarius is being impersonal meaning meaning not feeling too much and that means that it's, it's not Aquarius can't feel it's just that the channels of emotions don't flow as strongly at that time so you just have to be a little bit more aware of not being too operational and again when Mars is in Gemini it's gonna be like that until March it's been like that since August we're kind of tired of this Mars in Gemini these clashes uh, with siblings or relatives or within people within countries so that's going to be again elevated or changed in Mar in uh, March but uh, for tomorrow what we have is a little bit of an uh, opposition between Mercury and Minerva the goddess of wisdom but again it's an asteroid so it's not as intense uh, what we have is still that square there between Neptune and the moon so again don't try not to sign anything on um, Wednesday if it's possible again it's not terrible it's not like you have mercury retrograde you know Mars retrograde it's totally fine it's just fine-tuning if you can wait or you can do it Tuesday Wednesday that will be better especially because on Wednesday we have a complete uh, sorry Thursday we have a complete change of energy uh, the moon is moving into cancer and it's favoring the conjunction the Venus and uh, Neptune being in, in Pisces the moon is going to be in cancer Minerva is in cancer then south node is in uh, Scorpio so it creates a trine a trine is always like we talked about it the sacred mountain it's an ability to elevate to climb up to the higher places it's a pyramid in a sense and it's con it's basically between Venus the moon and the south node that is related again very strongly to Scorpio water so a lot of emotional energy on Thursday but the emotion seems to flow much better again the square is gonna be very tight between Venus and Mars Friday Saturday Sunday that's the peak of that square so again that's the time where it could be more uh, difficulties in relationship but Venus sending a beautiful trine to the moon and um, Minerva might give us situations where we can deal with it in a much better clearer way so that's gonna be again Thursday is totally fine to sign things we're out of that square between Neptune and Mars and the conjunction between Neptune and Vesta is getting tighter and Jupiter also is getting closer and closer to Chiron it's gonna be there <coughs> in a few weeks which really helps with anything to do with shamanism anything to do with teaching and learning so what we have also during that day if it's important um, no besides that things are going well and the Sun and, and then Mars are still sending positive energy so this week you can say is a week of action of doing of moving uh, Wednesday just to be a little bit more careful 
Then on uh, February 3rd, which is a Friday, the moon is still in Cancer, sending a perfect line to Neptune. That's a really beautiful day, Friday. Yes, I know that the, conjunct the square between Venus and Mars is going to be the tightest on Friday and Saturday. By the full moon of uh, February 5th, next Sunday, it should be done. So a lot of the tension in relationship are going to be over. It's almost as if things are being steered right now, you know, and caused a little bit more mayhem in relationships, bringing things out more to the open. So once um, uh, we have that beautiful Venus-Neptune conjunction, things can flow and heal much more. Because what I've noticed is happening right now, especially with... Uh, the aspects of the, the long aspects of Saturn and Jupiter because we have now Jupiter in Aries what uh, Jupiter in Aries is doing is activating positive energies around Aries we talked about it until let's say middle of May until middle of May Jupiter expands the energies of Aries identity and uh, general um, action movement vitality but it steers whatever you have. It's opening up a lot of opportunities, uh, creating a lot of opportunities wherever you have Aries in your chart. Then what's happening is that Saturn is going to move into Aries, but that's going to happen more in 2026, 27. That's when it's going to consolidate a lot of the gifts or a lot of the openness that is happening now with Jupiter. So since Saturn, Jupiter sorry, moved over Saturn, remember it was more in 2020, the grand conjunction. At that moment, what's happening is they switch places and what's going on is that Jupiter is opening things so Saturn later on can consolidate them and ground them. Uh, Jupiter help us plant the seeds, then Saturn comes over and this weeds out whatever doesn't work and forces us to focus on what does work. But the idea is that on Friday, the moon is in Cancer, very family-oriented, great for real estate. If you need anything with real estate, that's a great time. Then we have February 4 happening that's uh, a friday let's see where is the yeah. venus and mars is very much on that square you see the venus is 10 degrees uh, mars is 11 degrees so one more day i think in sunday it will be done but it's really peaking saturday sunday so be very patient with your partner this weekend uh, be very nice be very forgiving and the moon is moving into leo on saturday and sunday it will be a, a very fun uh, weekend especially because the moon needs to move into leo if it wants to be opposite to aquarius where the sun is so that, con that uh, opposition that sorry that uh, a full moon of tubishvat can actually happen but the moon is going to be on top of the black moon there's going to be the good mother bad mother uh, it's like as if uh, uh, the mother of demons is spawning a lot of demons at that time so what does it mean a lot of fears a lot of issues again i think it can be especially uh, triggering with anything to do with uh, lovers romance relationship partnerships uh, people are going to fall in and out of love very strongly in the next few weeks uh, that part of it is because the black moon and the, and the um, uh, night moon are conjuncting on Saturday and Sunday. That's why, it's actually, it's going to be only on Saturday. So Saturday is a day that you can say Friday is a good day for dates. Sunday is a great day for dates. Saturday, maybe you should just chill out. What we have still that day, if there's any, yeah, Venus and Minerva are sending beautiful energy to each other. So even though there are conflicts in relationship and Venus and um Mars are conjuncting, uh, sorry, are squaring, it is going to create a little bit better energy uh, with um, everything that has to do with healing later on, uh, Friday, Saturday, especially uh, Sunday, especially because that Venus, Neptune, I would say this, there's two forces there. There's one that creates arguments, a discord between relationship because our masculine and feminine, our anima and animus are in conflict in a square. But at the same time, Venus sending such beautiful energy to Minerva and to the South Node helps us get rid of any patterns that hold us back from intimacy, from passion, from our sexuality. Also, on Saturday, we have a Mercury and uh, Uranus uh, uh, trine. We have it already this whole week. So uh, maybe I didn't mention it, but this whole week is definitely governed by practical thing that Mercury can give you. Uh, that's more about work, uh, even health. That can be very, very helpful when Mercury and Uranus are trining. They've been doing it for the last week. They're going to continue. On February 5th is our uh, expected Sunday 
with a beautiful full moon. It is the day of the sun. The full moon is going to be in Leo, which is ruled by the sun. And that's going to really be helpful because also the sun and Mars are sending beautiful energy to each other. Mars and, this and the moon are sending a sextile to each other. It's actually a very powerful positive energy on Sunday. And yes, on that day, the moon and Venus, sorry, Venus and Mars square is ending and from the day after on Monday of next week it's going to get easier with relationship preparing us for the conjunction but you see that this week we're moving from Venus 2 degrees Pisces to Venus 11 12 degrees Pisces but we need to get her into 23 Pisces which is going to happen the weekend after uh, besides that if there's anything happening that week that weekend no it's uh, pretty quiet so Again, the full moon in uh, s on Sunday, February 5th, is a very special full moon. We'll talk about it in a second with a few things I prepared for you. Uh, just a few announcements. Um, if I look at um, what I have, where is it? This one. Um, so let's see what I have. Yeah, so a few workshops that I added for all of you guys. So for one of them is going to be right on. I try to do the workshops that actually I can control the time over um, an auspicious time. So we're going to have the power of your name workshop. It's going to be a webinar on March 21 because March 21 is the equinox and it's a new moon. So I really wanted us to work on our identity. We'll talk about your name, what actually it means, the DNA of your name, and what does it mean new moon and equinox together because it's going to be the astrological new year. So if you want to celebrate the real new year because it's the biblical new year and it's the astrological new year coming once in 19 years together. So it's kind of a rare uh, situation. So definitely uh, we'll talk about what does it mean to have the astrological new year, how you can reboot your uh, mission statement, your new year resolution. So that's going to be on March 21. And then we're going to have a Kabbalah workshop on March 4th from 6 to 8. It's going to be only in person. Sorry. Uh, that's for people who are in LA and the hybrid workshop on Valentine's Day is especially about soulmates, twin flame. What does it actually mean? And you have here the um, code to use alchemy in capitalized letters uh, to get ten, uh, $10 off. It's with the Den Meditation. So that's again February 13 at 7 p.m. One of the things that I read this week that made me uh, kind of uh, uh, not laugh because it's kind of sad. And I'm sorry for the slide being partly in Hebrew. It's from Haaretz, which is a, a newspaper that I read in Hebrew. And that's where I got that information. Remember one of the, I think the first uh, book club that I did was uh, in the beginning of the pandemic. If you remember on my birthday on the pandemic, we started uh, a, a free class that was a book club that we did for a while uh, to help us all deal with the pandemic. And the first book that I suggested is Master and Margarita, which is definitely my favorite book. We even talked about it in the context of the war later on with Ukraine because Bulgakov, who wrote it, was actually uh, Russian, but he was born in Kiev. So again, it's kind of interesting. But anyway, what happened is that the actor that has been uh, playing the role of Woland, which is basically the devil, just a recap, it's uh, an interesting book by Bulgakov. I highly recommend it, Master and Margarita, where uh, I read it in Hebrew the first time with a, when I was a teenager. In Hebrew, the translation was amazing, and it was called uh, Satan in Moscow. It wasn't called Master and Margarita. It was the censored version because it was actually translated in the 60s, but because that's what we have. But it's a really amazing book that talks about uh, the, the, the stupidity of the st uh, during the period of Stalin and communism and what will happen when the devil lands in Moscow. And he doesn't create anything bad, but he just shows to people uh, how crazy they are. So that show has been going on in one of the most important theaters, you can say, in Moscow since 2011. But the actor that plays Voland, the devil, uh, started reading his own poetry on YouTube that are anti the war in Ukraine. And he and his wife were fired uh, from the theater, uh, of course, because you can't have uh, free 
speech in, in Russia. You can't say anything about uh, the war, obviously, or about anything else. You can't say most of the stuff. I mean, that's basically what a, a lot of the people in the far right, or not that far, I mean, they're kind of close. Uh, Fox News, for example, that's what they want us eventually to get to the point where you can't sell these books, you can't read that book, you can't say this, you can't say that. You know, uh, for people who are obsessed about freedom, the far right is trying to get everybody locked up in their set of mind, uh, canceling everything. If anybody talks about cancel culture, it definitely exists on the right side. But anyway, he uh, was uh, not only that he was taken out of the show of the theater and uh, on, uh, out of the show of Master Margarita, but the theater, strangely enough, took Voland, that character, completely out of the picture. So now if you're going to go see Master and Margarita in Moscow, you will not have one of the most important characters. The fact the character that the book is named after in Hebrew, the sa Satan in Moscow or the devil in Moscow, there is no devil in that show, uh, even though he is the most important character basically there. So they basically took him out of the list of actors and characters. Like they killed the actor in a sense and the character with him. It means It just means to me that the actor was so embedded in the character and the character and the actor it was probably such a good actor that it wasn't enough just to take him and replace with somebody else they needed to take the whole character which happens to be the most important character in that book or let's say the, the character that incites all of the incidents in a sense so again it was happening last time uh, he started playing voland in 2011 remember a jupiter return jupiter happens every 12 years we're in 2023 when this is happening 12 years jupiter has completed a cycle. That's why when you go to grade one, you finish your high school in grade 12. You finished your journey in a sense. So that just shows how silly people can be and how, I mean, there's one thing about just being nasty, but it's stupid being nasty and an idiot at the same time. Not to mention that one of Bulgakov's, I uh, know, it was Dostoevsky books, uh, it was called The Idiot. Another idiots, uh, idiots. Today, this is the week of idiots. Uh, Pink Floyd came up with the logo for the 50 years for the dark side of the moon. And in that logo, there is a circle for the 50s, for those of you who can't see on Instagram. And in there, there is a uh, rainbow color, the prisms colors. And immediately, of course, in the right wing here in the United States, uh, especially the United States, because for some reason, the right wing here are more even idiotic than other places. Uh, all of Twitter was going on, things like that. I'm just going to read for you. Uh, one of the people, I'm not going to even mention his name because it's irrelevant. He says, what's up with the rainbow? Okay, so they started saying, lose the rainbow. You're making yourself look stupid. They're talking about Pink Floyd. They're saying you look stupid, right? What is Pink Floyd? What a disgrace. What happened to, di to Pink Floyd? From this moment, I'm not going to listen to the band again. You're talking about people from the right wing that always talk about how the left wing is canceling them, right? And then there's another idiot saying, uh, are you going to walk with uh, rainbows? Is there a straight flag? I want equal re representation. Don't get me wrong. We should all have true to what we are idiotic people because what they don't know and, the, and what they were called actually in Twitter by a lot of people are fake um, fans because if you remember the fla the, the uh, record when it came out 50 years ago of Pink Floyd it has uh, this beautiful triangle the prism and it breaks a ray of white light into the rainbow because that's what physically happens I know that the same people that are anti-science uh, anti are also anti-everything else anti-trans, anti-gays, anti-women, anti-black anti, just they're anti anti everything that is not the same as themselves so they just don't know or they don't remember or they never actually were fans of Pink Floyd because if they were they would immediately understand why the 50 years uh, uh, logo for the dark side of the moon has a rainbow inside of it it's not a rainbow it's a prism but yeah a rainbow is a prism it's the same thing it's the same scientific thing and some of the people there were clever enough to show Sir Isaac Newton inventing homosexuality in 1672 when he, in the last plague, uh, 1666, remember there was a plague, the Black Plague in London, he moved out of London to the village and started developing, again, what we know from mathematics and, and the Principia he wrote there. And he also made a big push forward with everything that has to do with lenses and the understanding of light and the principles of light and how light, when it's going through a prism, transforms into the rainbow colors. And that's why there was a lot of uh, examples 
A lot of people were posting uh, Newton, actually, this very famous picture of him creating that prism and in, in accusing him of inventing homosexuality at the same time. Now, it's interesting because Newton was a Capricorn, very traditionally, he was a very religious person, and he was a virgin. He died virgin. I mean, I don't know if anybody could really prove it, but that's what they say. He was a virgin. So, and uh, another inter interesting thing about canceling is uh, Tucker's War and Eminem. Some of you I uh, f maybe have seen Eminem. It's a kind of um, very interesting, um, very iconic, you say, candy. And they used to have the candies spokesman, like uh, these candies, these M&Ms that had little hands. And they were spheres with different colors, and they had shoes, and they had gloves, and they had hands. So they're basically the circle that you usually eat. And they were talking and making sounds. Now, I never understand when candies or any kind of popcorns or anything like that. Sometimes you go to cinema and before the movie, uh, you see the popcorn speaking to you or the Coca-Cola. These are things that we're going to consume and eat. So it's kind of cannibalistic to be emotionally associated with something that's cute and then eat it. You know, uh, never mind. But the idea is that M&M had these different spheres of colors that had different voices and different characters and they were supposed to be cute and likable okay so tucker because he does nothing else to do decided to wage war against them calling them woke why because they had a new purple uh, character that he decided that her boots and her mannerism is i binary and he couldn't tell uh, what is the quote from him? Yeah, listen to this. Eminem will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character, that's what he's saying, is deeply appealing uh, and unappealing, sorry, and totally androgynous until the moment you wouldn't want to have a drink with any one of them. That's the goal. When you're really totally turned off, we have achieved equality. They've won. Now, I mean, this is the most idiotic thing I ever heard in my life. First of all, what is the purpose of Eminem if they want to advertise something that we will not like them okay that's illogical but i don't understand people like a uh, carson that actually want to have a drink with a candy called m&m i mean i don't know if the whole purpose of these characters uh, of m&ms is to want to have a drink with them i mean what kind of a person would sit with a, in a bar or someplace and have a drink with a candy of M&M. That was his biggest issue, that they're not likable enough for him to take him to the bar. Now, it's interesting because the company is also the company of Mars. It's the god of war. And the M&Ms were created in 1941 for soldiers because they needed, I guess, some sugar and some energy. It's like the LSD of our fetamine for um, the warriors. And then, actually, in 1995, it was interesting because 1995 is a Saturn return of what's going on right now. They decided to change the colors again of these um, candies. Now, if you look at the candies here, you see all of them. There is a black, say, orange. There is purple that was kicked out because it was too much for uh, Fox News. There was uh, red that for a while was not there but came back. There was yellow. There's green. There's blue. In fact, there's almost every color of the spheres of the tree of life. And what caused all of these uh, mayhem and these problems and for Fox News and that led eventually to Eminem to decide to kick out to cancel the purple uh, candy poor candy is the purple one and the purple is foundation which is funny enough a foundation in the tree of life is death so no wonder it killed the whole uh, uh, you know array of spheres for the M&Ms but it's also sexuality transformation and secrets and magic so this is what carlson and uh, maybe picked up on that purple is dangerous that purple can transform people can groom people to become gay or to become lesbian because they identify with a candy i mean this is where we got to and the, the thing is remember we always talked about the dark side of democracy is the rule of minority and we see it we talked about the congress what is happening and how shameful uh, it is here what's happening here in the united states it's also similar to what's going on in israel by the way and i just came back from there so some of you know some of you heard what i had to say about that but it's it's sad that people like him uh, even though he has the most popular show on tv still these people that support him are minority and now we have one of his uh uh, close friends or one of his acolytes, um, uh, Marjorie Green, 
a, a woman that was absolutely sure that the COVID came from laser beings that were created by Jews and sponsored by Jews, of course, because if anybody can afford lasers from outer space and aliens, it must be the Jews. I'm sure there is Jews already in alien places, the same way that the logic is that there is Jews everywhere in the world. There must be Jews everywhere in the galaxy as well, and they sponsor laser beings that come here. No, she is now standing uh, in the committee of the uh, Homeland Security. I'm sure that she is now trying to pass some laws to have a shield of protection against lasers coming from Jews that are aliens. But welcome to America. I think that that's why Bowie a prophet wrote uh, the song, I think it was in the 90s, I'm Afraid of Americans. Moon eclipse, remember January 30th, Mars is going to be eclipsing, uh, Moon is going to be eclipsing Mars. I'm talking about Mars the planet, not Mars the candies. And it's uh, around 8.36 p.m. in uh, Los Angeles, if you want to see it. It's going to be, and then the basically Mars is going to disappear at 8.36 tomorrow and reappear at 9.30 uh, again. So if you lose Mars all of a sudden, don't worry. It's not Tucker uh, taking him out of uh, canceling him. It's just that the moon is going to be eclipsing it. And the moon and Mars, like I told you, is in Gemini. Another interesting I saw is um, a, a piece from Alexandro Palombo in uh, Milano. He actually created on the, I think it was on the Shoah Memorial of Milan. He actually wrote something called Track 21. Um, and it's, um, it's from track 21. It's when hundreds of uh, Jews were loaded into livestock wagons headed towards concentration camp in Auschwitz. So he placed a, an image of the Simpson family, but all very thin uh, and with uh, the um, six-pointed yellow star on them and <coughs> basically sent to concentration camp. It's a really touching picture uh, or image or a mural. It's, again, artist as being the prophets and there is another one uh, that shows them entering Auschwitz uh, with um, the saying work liberates if you remember that was the uh, the entrance to Auschwitz and it was especially for the 27th of January I think it was yesterday or eight days ago that was the official day of uh, the Shoah the Holy uh, Holocaust so February 5 we have this full moon that I told you about the full moon is a very auspicious full moon it is the full moon that is opposite to the love full moon that happens in Leo. So the Leo full moon is the biblical Valentine's Day. It happens during Leo when the moon is in Aquarius and the sun is in Leo. The opposite one of it, 180, 180 days, degrees, uh, days and degrees away, is the fact that the sun is in Aquarius and the moon is in Leo. And that's what we're going to have on February 5th. Now, it's kind of interesting. It's going to be a full moon in the middle of uh, Leo. So it's a very strong full moon. And the Sabian symbol is volunteer church choir uh, makes social event of what? Ah, oh, a, a, a social event of rehearsals. So some rehearsal happening uh, in a choir, a volunteer choir. You know, volunteer makes sense because Aquarius is the sign of altruism. It's the sign of people, communities, groups, the sign of humanity. That's what we are calling in astrology. In astrology, we say that Aquarius is the sign of humanity, of human beings. So it's interesting. We talked about it before, and I mentioned it in the book. It's the sign of humans, but it's also the sign of technology, cyborgs, and it's also the sign of aliens. So it means that we are all connected, cybers, um, humans and aliens basically everything's connected but we are especially under the same influence of aquarius which happens to be the sign of saints and the sign of humanity humanitarian causes altruism so that's why i think astrology does believe or does support philosophers who believe that we are in our core good that we have goodness inside of us and that what we call in kabbalah klipot or our layers is what keeps that goodness hidden and this is especially important for what's happening on February 5th. According to Kabbalah, and especially Luria, uh, Luria was a 16th century Kabbalist that uh, born in Jerusalem, but he lived in uh, Tzfat most of his life. And he really took, he upgraded Kabbalah to the next level in the um, end of the 16th century, beginning of the 17th century. And he described every human as having a spark. A spark is a piece of God that in the story of creation there was the big explosion it wasn't an explosion but there was something like um, um 
the breaking of the vessels. Uh, he called it a cosmic accident. I don't know if it was an accident or basically something that was part of the plan. I'm going to talk about it in the Kabbalah class quite a lot. So the idea is that there was, a, like the Big Bang, some kind of uh, explosion, but it wasn't really an explosion. Even the Big Bang talked about a moment when singularity expanded, basically existed, expanded into nothingness, like the Buddhists talk about in Shunyata, or in the Kabbalah they talk about Ein Sof. So when that moment happened, there was a breaking of the vessels, and our job is, uh, we, we are made, our soul is made of pieces of these vessels, and we're supposed to fix it, tikkun, we're supposed to put it together. So each one of us carry a spark of God, a divine seed, you can say, a piece of the DNA, the cosmic DNA. And it's located in us. In Kundalini Yoga, for example, they believe it's in the uh, tip of your spine. That's the Kundalini, the feminine serpent that can rise. That's the place where they call the spark. In Kabbalah, they don't mention specifically where logically or, or physically uh, that piece is located, but the idea that every person on this planet, even the most evil and idiotic, uh, like what we mentioned with Fox News, they even have a spark of God. It's just that it's really covered by a lot of ignorance. Ignorance is the source of evil, according to um, Buddhism. So anyway, the idea is that in Tubishvat, that spark of God can be replanted in you. It's reactivated in a sense. It's almost as if the epigenetics, the marker of that gene, is opening up that that uh, spark of God, that divine match inside of you that can bring up your Kundalini. So the idea is that on February 5th, which is a Tubishvat, it's a day where you're supposed to plant trees. Now, some of the rabbis in the Talmud say that the reason why it's happening on that full moon is because usually, especially in the Near East, all of the rains came. It's what's happened even in here in LA, California, which is very similar uh, climate to um, Israel. And what happened around that time is that most of the rains already came. The, the land is very fertile. It's, it's, she's full and she's ready to give life out of all this water that she contains. And that's the best time to plant trees. And in fact, it's actually not a bad time at all to do that. So this is a great time if you want to plant something. Of course, if you're located in northern uh, altitudes, it's going to be a little bit tougher because it's still a little bit um, cold. But again, most of these mythology were created in the Near East. So you have to think about the climate that is uh, around uh, the Levant. But the idea is that it's based on the concept that in De Deuteronomy 2019, there's a beautiful um, sentence that says something like the men uh, or human is a tree in the field. So that's why God forbade uh, Joshua when he conquers the Holy Land, the Promised Land, not to cut down trees, especially trees that, ha that bear fruits. So it's almost like you don't want to cut uh, those that give you the food for you. You don't want to spit in the well, in a sense. So it reminds humanity that humans are just like a tree in a field. And it's interesting because Aquarius, we talked about it as a sign of humanity. Now we're seeing it's not only uh, aliens, it's not only digits uh, or, sorry, digital friends that we have. It's not only humanity that's ruled by Aquarius, but it could also be that forests, are ruled by Aquarius because forest is anything that has to do with a community, a group. And now, thanks to science that we know is ruled by Aquarius, we know that forests are linked by mycelium, by um, networks of uh, fungi, fungi, uh, fungi, fungi. I don't know how you always say it, but uh, mushrooms. Okay, so they're all linked there, like they're a little internet. So the concept is that when the full moon is in Aquarius and the sun and the moon are fully strong, fully in strength, that's when the forest awakens, but also the forest of all the sparks of God that exist in all of humanity. It's a time where humans can come together, especially to honor the earth, to understand that our real community is not only between people or countries which are ruled by Aquarius, but also with Mother Nature. So the idea is that around Sunday, you should eat a lot of seeds. That's why in Tubishvat we eat seeds and dried fruits, because the idea is to act the, uh, to reconnect to that archetype. Like attracts like, we connect to the seeds outside of us, we'll connect to the seed of God within us. So uh, Tubishvat is called Tubishvat, because Tu is 15, and, se and Shvat is interesting because it actually re represents the 11th month, 11th month, 11th sign, Aquarius, because the year, the biblical year, like I mentioned before, starts on the 21st, on the equinox of March. That's the biblical, sorry, that's the, the uh, Babylonian New Year. And the biblical New Year will be the first new moon after that day, which is very close usually, and that is the new moon in Aries. 
So if you count from Aries 11, you will get to Aquarius, which is where we are now. Shvat is the month that is the 11th month in the Babylonian calendar, which I said starts in the equinox. And the name of Shabt, uh, Shv, Sh, 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 to be Shvat, Shvat, actually comes from Akkadian origin and it Shabbatu, which basically means to strike. The reason why strike is because, again, during that time, in the Near East, we do have sometimes the strongest rains. Even here in LA, it happened a week, two weeks ago, during Aquarius, during the um, month of the water bucket, right? And it's always the water bucket. Now you understand in Babylonian, New Year, and uh, New and uh, Near East, that's when the skies, the gods were pouring uh, buckets of water, like it's raining buckets of water. Again, the water bear, that's why Aquarius is associated with water. It's not a uh, water sign. It's an air sign, but it's the water coming from the skies, coming from the air. That's why Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Uranus is the god of the sky. So it's like hitting us with rain. And also, it has the same root as Shvat. Shvat is Shevet. Shevet is uh, also a staff, like a wizard has a staff. Uh, the staff of the witch is the broom, but it's still uh, called a staff. In Hebrew, it would be that. And also, it means a tribe. And again, it's interesting, the connection tribes is Aquarius. It's our ability to connect to communities, to people. So here you can see the etymology. Etymology number one is a mate. Mate from a shevet, from a staff. It also means the month of wheat, the start of the harvest season. But it's also, more than anything, the idea behind putting together, coming together. And in one of the most famous psalms we have, where is it? Um, yeah, one of the famous psalms is Psalms 20, uh, Psalm 23. Uh, you heard it a lot in movies and you heard it many times spoken before. Where is that? Um, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. And in Hebrew, Gam ki elech begay tsalmavet lo yira ra ki ata imadi shivtecha umanotcha hema yanachmuni. So if you heard, I said shivtecha u mishantecha. So your tribe and the staff, thy staff, whatever you're leaning against. So it's almost like the, the shepherd has the staff and behind him his tribe, his, uh, his flock in a sense. So the idea behind this um, psalm that is very, very famous, that even if you're going in the shadow of the valley of death, you know, it's like the valley of the shadow of death. It's not even death because you're not dead yet, but the shadow of death is hovering. You should fear no, nothing for you are walking there with God. Everything is part of the one and we are all there with you. The Shevet, your, your tribe is there with you. Your Aquarians are there uh, with you. So that was a little bit about next Sunday. And again, next Sunday, we'll talk about it and we'll do a little meditation here to connect to your tribe, to open up your, your seed. So next Sunday, uh, we will do that meditation here together. And uh, until then, I hope you have an amazing week. And I'm going to just uh, bid farewell to people. Uh, I see some of you. Thanks for making it. 